we have our eight part question and that I'm going to count this as eight questions. So you can't ask any more questions this year. Um, I'm just joking <laughs> uh, on the, uh, on the flex 36. And I guess in this case, it applies to the flex 60 as well. What is the target high pressure and low pressure and the target superheat and sub when checking pressures of the outdoor unit? So we're going to start with that one, Greg. With that being a fully inverter driven system with no way to lock the compressor speed at specific speed, we cannot give you target subcooling, target superheat, target pressures. The refrigerant charge on those is based solely off of weighing the charge in. Right. Okay. I'd like to add something to that. I know that some other inverter manufacturers have given like a chart, you know, like a subcooling chart. But if you look at that subcooling chart, it's like from nine to 19, you know, that kind of thing. If you have a leak, you, you know, you're supposed to fix it anyway. Right. And the way, you know, I've said it before in the past is that if you, if you know you had some kind of leak or something, you know, you're low on refrigerant. If you add refrigerant, it is closer to being properly charged than if you didn't. But yes, you're absolutely right. There are like a dozen or so parameters that the unit's using to run at a given speed. You know, trying to grab one parameter and make a determination of whether or not it's running properly is just not what we can do. So the flex in that case is not unlike the mini splits or a VRF product or a uh, multi-pro style system. Well, um, even in the VRF product, just to kind of clarify it a little bit better, you still don't really troubleshoot by pr pressures and subcooling and superheat because there's so many other parameters in that world of equipment. You got to be able to put it all together at once. Right. If you try to troubleshoot just off of pressures, you're gonna you're not gonna get that machine working properly. Right, and uh, one more thing: the the subcooling or superheat chart or whatever that you're given for an inverter driven piece of equipment, particularly for a rebranded inverter piece of equipment. Uh, the question I would ask, I mean, and I know the answer to this is, was it the factory who provided that data, or was it something that somebody saw at one time and then just provide a range? You know. And in that case, most of the time, it's just a range. And if you fall somewhere in that, it could be normal. Who knows? But effectively, what you're doing is if you're if you're looking to try to get a delta or some kind of normal pressure or whatever, it might run great today. It might not run great tomorrow. You know, the sun comes up tomorrow and it's hot. Now it's not going to run right. You know, that kind of thing. So the only way to ensure that it's absolutely going to work like it's supposed to is by weighing it in. Uh, number two, is the indoor motor constant fixed toward variable speed? That is a variable speed motor. I know currently with the dip switches, you'd set a dip switch and it runs at one speed. But if you look at constant torque or what we generally call X13 motors, those were the five speed ECM motors. We have more than five speeds on the flex, but currently uh, you set it to one speed and, and that's what it runs. But that's that's really a variable speed motor. And as I've talked about, I think on the last show, we're working on development of a flex smart controller that will give variable speed capability, you know, basically unlock the features of that motor. But yeah, it's it's technically a variable speed motor. Right. And if you are looking for a variable speed motor like from us right now in that style of system, I invite you to check out the Multi Pro. It does provide variable speed. Uh, right now, let's see. On the next part of the question is how to test if the blower motor is responding to dip switch changes for airflow. How would you go about testing that? First of all, when you set the dip switches on a flex unit, you absolutely have to have the power off. If you change them dip switches while the machine is still powered up, it will not recognize the change to the dip switches until the unit's power cycle. But secondly, if you're trying to just figure out if it is going to be, if, if it's responding, Set it at a really low airflow, measure your static pressure, look at the blower chart, see what CFM you're delivering, and then power it back down, set it at a much higher setting, and then reestablish power, turn the fan back on, remeasure your static pressure, and see what your airflow is off of the chart then. That's going to clearly tell you whether or not it is recognizing the speed changes. Because if you go from like speed two setting to say, speed seven setting, that's a noticeable difference in the profile we're sending to that motor to make it run it. I have not had any cases yet, and I never say never, where a dip switch changed and it wasn't actually being profiled to the motor. 
Right. This is not a common problem with it is what I'm getting at. Right. Yeah, there's no reason to try to be playing operation. So, yeah, ensure that the power is off when you're making those dip switch changes. But uh, let's see here. Uh, does putting the unit in force cool operation at the outdoor unit ramp the compressor to 100% capacity? It does not. All it does is force it to run. And since it is thermostat driven, if you force it to run, it does not have the ability to turn the indoor fan on. So if you're going to do that, you need to make sure the thermostat, you turn the fan to on and make sure the indoor blowers run when you force it on. Okay. Does the indoor coil temperature sensor have anything to do with how fast the blower motor runs? I don't believe it does. Not through our own testing. No, it, it doesn't. No, do with through it. our own testing, it doesn't. And it doesn't. A lot of people think it, it would add freeze protection. It does not. Which, you know, at that point, what would it do? You know, like what what right. would the air handler be capable of doing at that point? Would it shut the outdoor unit now? You know, it, like it can't, right? I think Gree put them on there as, as a possibility for future production. I don't believe they really do anything at this point. Right. Why does the outdoor unit have a G terminal? It's a test point. So if you actually take that G wire and take it all the way through to the outdoor unit from the indoor unit, if you want to test and see if you're getting 24 volts across that, you don't have to run back inside to check anything. You can just sit, you know, take your meter outside and check all your test points from, from the outside. But as far as, as far as functionality, no, it has no use on the, on the outdoor unit. It's just a test point. And if right. that wires ran out there too, that you could always do, if you do have it hooked up, you could, you could do the force run operation. You could jump R to G and it'll turn the fan on inside. Okay. On the, I guess, particular to the flex 36 is the airflow volume at 830 CFM or a thousand CFM from the factory at level four default. So on the four ton and the five ton, I believe their factory set at speed six, not speed four. Depends on the static pressure drop. As to the actual CFM you're moving. All you're yeah. doing is giving it a profile for a fixed speed on the fan. And depending on your static and looking at the blower chart, after you measure the static, it'll tell you the CFM that it's actually delivering. Right, because if you raise or lower the static pressure, it's going to change the amount of CFM that you're delivering. Correct. Higher static, lower CFM, lower static, higher CFM. All you did was give it a fixed speed to run it. And you said you think that is speed 6 from the factory on the Flex 36? Uh, is that 36? I thought it was 5 ton. Or 4 ton. Oh, no, it's a, it's a 36. Okay, it is speed 4. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. So 2 and 3 four. ton, it's going to be speed 4. And right. 4 and 5 ton, it's speed 6. So from an HRI st testing standpoint, what they've done here is they've got speed four set from the factory. They hook up duct work or whatever apparatus they've got from an HRI testing standpoint. They hook that up and put 0.5 inches of static Dang. pressure on that unit, which would then rate it at 830 CFM. So that is the CFM that it at, if you if your duct work is at 0.5, right? And we have it set for speed four. You should be able to expect 830 CFM at that point. Right. And if it was at 0.5, you know, then you can, you can adjust the static pressure from there to get whatever CFM that you're trying to deliver to the space. All right. Well, unless you guys have something to add, um, I think th those are some of the best questions I, I believe we've ever received. And, uh, it's, it feels like they're getting more and more difficult as time's going on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, which which we appreciate you know we we do like to nerd out about this stuff i, I call greg sometimes uh you know maybe after hours and we're talking about heating and air conditioning and that's just what we do it's, it's all i ever talk about uh <laughs>